Um, hello. I uh, first want to thank uh, Philip and uh, Caroline for inviting me here. It's always uh, it's always a treat to come to London. Uh, it's about 20 degrees colder than San Francisco, but uh, <laughs> it's it, it, it's a great it's a great deal of fun. I'm staying right here, close by, and in Shoreditch. Um, and you know, I, the conversation I want to have with you today, and, and what we're going to look at today, are some ideas that pretty much are things that we're seeing. Um, in the workplace throughout uh, North, North America. We're doing, both, we're doing these ideas and these concepts on both sides of the coast and everything in between is starting to kind of follow suit. Um, the term or the, the statement invisible workplace is really, is really talking about the idea that the workplace and, and where we live and, and where we socialize have sort of blended. Uh, the idea that you have these, um, these sequestered and farm-like workstations that are, are very linearly laid out and conference rooms um, and just your typical workplace layout is something that's changing. We're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of our older clients uh, interested in this change. And you're going to see a lot of our newer clients, um, and it's mostly the startups, uh, and a lot of it is because they, 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 they have a younger workforce. Um, there are older developers, but the idea that they work in comfort and they work at ease and they work anywhere on the floor plate. So that's what we're going to look at today. So the starting slide um, is your typical workplace scenario. So high cubes, conference rooms, hard wall offices. Um, this has pretty much been the mainstay uh, in workplace for the last 20 years. We, we, we see a lot of it still going on today, and we still plan that way for some older companies. But for the newer ones, and ones that we're doing remodels for, we try to talk to them about how the workplace needs to change, and how you can get everybody, the buzzword is collaboration, and everybody working as a, as a, as a community as opposed to a workforce. So how do you build community and culture in the workplace? This is um, an example of a place uh, up in uh, Redmond, Washington. This is actually a Microsoft facility that we remodeled. So I'm going to deconstruct it for you a little bit. This was the typical office or workplace layout for, um, this is building number four. Uh, Bill Gates was actually in this building. So you can see it's hard wall office intensive. There's not even cubes at this point in the 80s. Um, and this is the best way to, to build offices. I mean, you'd build a star-shaped building, which is very strange, and you put more offices down the middle, and you see maybe one or two conference rooms. So your, your count of conference room per person is uh, 1 to 20, which doesn't work in today's workplace. Uh, we have a lot more one-on-one -on -one meetings. We have a lot more needs to, to, to take a phone call in a private room, and you don't want to waste a 15 by 20 foot room doing that. So you're going to see ways that we've, we've sort of flattened the organization and deconstructed that and have a new format, which a lot of you guys have done in workplace before. So this is um, our first uh, attempt at deconstructing it or opening up the middle. The idea here is that a lot, of the, a lot of the meeting will happen right kind of in the center cores where circulation is the heaviest. So we try to take advantage of circulation and places where people will kind of meet and go upstairs and create lunch areas. This happens to be a library. You can see that we've already begun taking off the offices on the perimeter. Um, and put cubes along the perimeter. That's something that is not normal for this particular company. It's normal for a lot of companies that we do, probably in the Silicon Valley, because offices aren't as big of a deal. But um, this, is a, this is a new thing for, for Microsoft. So what I'm going to go over here real quickly are 10 topologies that we've developed in or order to organize a workplace. And these 10 topologies, um, there are derivatives of these. Some of these ideas. Um, are, are things that you might have thought about and done in workplace, but we've just figured out that of, of all the workplaces, we typically come up with at least 10 different places for you to work. So this talks about the workplace variety. Um, your daily ritual in the workplace is very different for you, for, my, for, for, for somebody else. And what we want to do is make sure that that workday ritual, we have places to accommodate the type of thinking, what you might be doing during, doing during the day. So we create. Um, all these different spaces for you to work. So the entire floor plate is a usable workspace. So from the very bottom here, we have the workshop. Uh, the workshop denotes an idea that people like to work standing up, and you've seen that uh, quite often. Um, town hall is, is a space where you have your all-hands meetings, where you might gather 
with the rest of your team, and it needs to be immediately available. It's not a training room any room. It's a training room anymore. It's actually a space where food is served, where you can have a one on, where you can have a large group meeting, and you can have small meetings. So that's usually towards the center of the of the building. Think tanks are one-on-one -on -one little rooms, and they tend to be the size of a phone booth, a five-by-five five room. This is a very common room. We probably do more of these than we do medium to large size conference rooms. Shelter is that in-between space, so in between a hard wall office and a lounge, a piece of lounge furniture in the hallway, we have these rooms that are more um, cabana and more, more, more like a tent-like structure, and they're very, very easy to get into. They don't have necessarily doors. Uh, but the idea is that they denote a different type of conversation, a very, a very casual conversation that you don't need closed doors to have. Individual work areas, well, they are still pretty much um, the same other than we are doing more benching. Um, I know benching has been very popular out here in Europe. It hasn't been so popular in the United States, and it is finally starting to catch on. Um, war rooms are your typical boardrooms. Uh, they're they tend to be um, heavily glassed, they're very transparent. The idea is that no one should have a meeting, that no one knows who's in that meeting. Uh, so the whole idea of the secret meeting doesn't happen anymore in these new transparent workplaces. Library is a space that we've created so that in the open plan, you have a place to do heads down work, so there's not gonna be noisy work that happens there. So the protocol is, in the library, you do quiet work. And they're adjacent to open cubes and workstations. Uh, we just want to make sure that when people are in there, they're not, making, they're not making a lot of noise so people can do concentrated work. Living room, and they're scattered throughout in green. The idea is that the conversation changes when you have casual, very familiar, almost living room type furniture. So the idea that we create these spaces that look more or less like a living room, and they tend not to be contract furnishings, they actually tend to be very, very residential and great. And that is so the conversation is different. If you clone stamp a contract piece of furnishings throughout a facility, you may get some people to use it, but it becomes very tiresome. So these idea, these are curated very differently from space to space. Studios. Um, actually, those, um, I, I confuse workshop and studio. Studios are the high workstation area, so if you want to do a quick meeting or you work, want to work standing up, yes, you can have a stand station, but we also want to provide those in the workspace. And then anywhere, the idea that all your transitory hallways um, become usable workspace. So you need to put whiteboard, tack boards, technology needs to be in those areas. So the first topology that we're going to look at is town hall. And town hall, um, for us these days, takes on a very residential, very kitchen um, feel. It's the place where, uh, usually when you're on a tour with a new company these days in the Valley, the first place they take you to is town hall. Um, food's a big thing. They serve three meals a day there. They have all the snacks there. The idea being that that's the welcoming, that's the heart, that is the place that the company sort of brings you in and accepts you into the family or you feel a part of the family right away. So it does have a very res residential feel. And um, for this particular company, the town hall is a whiskey bar. These guys really, <laughs> it, it is actually a bar, full bar setup, but it also is <laughs> below, these, below this counter um, are basically plugins, and you can actually push your technology. This is a work area. So during parts of the day, maybe towards the end of the day, somebody might be here working. And towards the evening, Tend, they tend to have a lot of happy hour or social events, and they usually happen around four or five. Usually they always take place in an area like this. Uh, I don't know if you guys have Open Table here in London. This is actually Open Table's new headquarters in San Francisco. And the idea is that this is very reflective of the brand. The kitchen is a nice way to invite people into this space and show, show people what the company's about. Uh, before that, they didn't have any of this feel. So this is where brand starts blending into some of these spaces, and not just an overt like use of colors uh, and, and maybe signage that depicts um, uh, things about the company. Um, this is more exactly what the company does in terms of it, it mostly serves restaurants. It typically, the people in there like to cook for each other. So we want to create a place that that all can happen, and it's all at the front of the space. Here's a picture of a library. Uh, again, the idea is that this is a place to do quiet work. It doesn't necessarily have to have books, although in some, play, uh, in some designs we will reinforce the idea of library through bringing in <laughs> library wallpaper. Uh, so this is actually a, an English startup called Quid, and uh, they all went to 
they all went to school in, in England, I think it was Cambridge, and they decided they wanted to create their library. And this is where they do their quiet work. So you actually, you know, we, from, from getting everything from wingback chairs and the library shelves, this is actually uh, a rapid shelf, like a storage shelf, but we just, you know, turned it into a backdrop for the library wall. Um, this is an interesting concept. In raised floor, we actually have an opportunity to do some really nice, intimate areas. So this is actually about a 24-inch raised floor, not typical in the Bay Area, actually. Most of our stuff is above the ceiling. Uh, this happened to be a building that had been vacant for 12 years. It was very difficult to lease. It's just outside of where south of market most of the tech, tech companies are in an area called Mission Bay. But we were able to make it feel as fun as an old warehouse in south of market by doing little elements like this. So this sunken living room is their library. Workshop. Um, Companies now um, allow a little bit of personal time to happen at the workplace. And the idea is that you're going to be working mostly, mostly on company projects, but you need a place to allow, um, not allow people to actually work on their personal projects. So we've created areas. This one happens to be more uh, hands-on. It's a more of a tool shop, work on your bike. Um, there's an area where you can kind of play musical instruments. It's, a, it's adjacent to town hall where we have a lot of the a lot of the um, pool tables and foosball tables. In this area here, this is actually Microsoft, this is called the garage. And what people will be doing here is working on personal projects. And a lot of these would be building their own applications, doing something different um, and opposite from what they would do at work. And when you're working on, basically when you're working on, the, on code all day long, you want to do something physical. So we do create these spaces pretty, pretty routinely as a, as a space to do something opposite from your day-to-day from your -day work on the computer. Shelters are those in-between non-bookable spaces. So if you see these, they're typically open. They can be shared by people. This is at Square. I don't know if you're familiar with Square, but um, we had large hallways that we were able to create that take you through the space. We thought we'd put these really interesting spaces for people to congregate and work. Um, and or just chill out. You, you don't have to do work necessarily in them, but the idea that you have an alternative from your hardwall conference room and lounge furniture. And this is quite simply um, the material you'd see on a warehouse door. We've just put it on a metal ring, brought it down on threaded rod. Um, it's right in the middle of the space, yet when you push through that screen, you feel like you're in a, in a different area or a different space. This is actually Cisco. Uh, we just finished the headquarters for them in South San Francisco. Uh, they actually purchased a company called Meraki, and Meraki, were, were, they, they had yurts in their facility. Uh, so this is actually a yurt sort of revisited, and there are various levels of privacy. So this is a very open one. You can see the opening closing, and then this one has a very small entrance, and they're all lined with uh, felt, so they actually acoustically perform very well. Studio is that, that high workstation, so think of a... Um, Think of a bar, think about the high tables and how easy it is to have conversation and work, and work from that area. So we tried to provide, this is at Samsung in their design area, so we put high tables there to sort of excel that conversa conversation with the design consultants. Their job here is to redesign product as it comes into the US market. Uh, this is a company called Zazzle, and, and it's very close to what would be their town hall, which is this big coffee area. To the left and right are workstations, and we have these big high tables interspersed between uh, large cube, uh, workstation areas. This is actually another company in this valley called reputation.com. These, um, the engineers there likened themselves to scientists. So they wanted to have a very lab, a very science um, background aesthetic. So we did Unistrut, cork board, tack board, um, almost make it feel like a high school lab, which is th what they wanted. Individual work areas. <laughs> Um, have taken on a very custom look. Uh, we're finding more and more of our customers want to have a custom finish and detail to their workstation so it doesn't look, as they put it, clone stamped like a repeat. So we actually make these. There's butcher block table and cold rolled steel. Um, very, very uh, flexible in the way they can lay out. This is at Microsoft. Uh, they have about 20 different manufacturers they work with and they typically go with one in a workspace. We actually made this up with five different manufacturers so it didn't look like a kit of parts from one manufacturer. This is actually an individual work area which we've gotten down to about as small as you can get. This is a six by eight station. 
So you can see there's three tiles along the back. The tiles are typically two feet and then six feet this way. You can get a nice desk, side chair, and to the back there's whiteboard and corkboard. Um, so it actually works as a private office. It's about half the size of their typical private office. Think tanks are those rooms that are the smallest of the conference rooms. And typically they're used for one-on-one -on -one meetings to take a phone call. We probably do more of these now than we do of standard size conference rooms, simply because the way we work today requires you to use your, your phone and you need to maybe break away from your workstation. Or if you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, you don't necessarily need to take up a big conference room. Um, this is at Cisco and you can see there's you know, there's, 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 a, there's room for a table or there's room for not a table. And, and the idea is that the conversation slightly changes when you have comfy furniture versus a, a desk and uh, two chairs. So we want to make sure that that, you know, is, is, is clearly defined. So you can see there's a table in this one, but this is mostly lounge furniture. Um, and then this one's actually at Zazzle. They actually bought <laughs> telephones, <laughs> telephone booths, these numbered telephone booths from England and shipped them over. They weighed 3,000 pounds apiece. We actually had to locate them over a beam in the office space, uh, but people use them. There's actually live phones in there, but you can go in there with a cell phone and you can hang out. And they're actually gigantic. These are the biggest, biggest phone booths. Um, war room is, is the conference room. And the idea um, really that we try to stress here, they're usually in very public spaces and we try to make them as open and transparent as possible. Thus, you see all the glass. This is Climate Corp, which is a, a weather a company that, that ties into the stock exchange. They sell reports. So that's actually a live model of the Earth that has four projectors that actually show the Earth rotating and cloud cover in real time. Um, and they can be as simple as this. This is um, an old sewing factory in South of Market. Uh, raw concrete, uh, very, very exposed steel for their conference room. Again, very open, very transparent. Um, and then this one is, um, they tend to play poker at night, so why can't we have a room that can double up as a meeting space and do things at night? So there's a bit of multi-purpose. They all, this one opens up to, to the common area really nicely, and also with one kind of a, you can swing it down, it's on a cantilever, or it has weights, and you can bring it down, one person can bring it down easily. Living room is that aesthetic that I was mentioning that people are more apt to you know, have a very, very in, informal conversation if you have these types of setups. So we have a lot of very comfortable furniture and, and they're located within groups or between groups, but they're readily available and they're usually, they don't look the same all the time. The last thing you wanna do is have this repeated 50 times over. So we do a lot of work in specking, curating, making sure that they feel different from space to space. Uh, this is Cisco's new one, and this is actually adjacent to a bakery setup and coffee bar. Um, this happens to be a little bit further out of the urban core, so we bring a lot of the amenities in. Um, so you actually can get your favorite coffee right in, right in the work area. There's a little game room here, and you can see the little private conference rooms. Uh, we even go to, you know, this is the first time we've ever done it, but we brought a fireplace. This happened to be on a top floor. We can actually run a pipe to the roof and create a living room right adjacent to this, this work area here to the left. So um, they, they've become actually the new conference room in these, these really comfortable lounges. The idea that you can work anywhere, um, we work a lot with developers in the United States, and a lot of our buildings don't really lend themselves well to work in the hallways or in the common area. So what we're doing now is we're stressing that people like to, when they lease, actually use the common areas of the building. And if you can strategize a way to make them more useful, um, you can um, get more use of them. So putting the right furnishings in there, that um, this is actually at Facebook. Uh, this is the common area of uh, 395 Page Mill, which is a building in Palo Alto. So the idea that if you put whiteboard, um, nice seating and technology, people will hang out in those areas. So expand the footprint of the, of the tenant's workspace into the common areas. And the idea that you can work anywhere. So trans, basically a communicating staircase, um, yes, it can connect a, com a company on multi-floors, but it also can be a place that you can do meetings from, you can run events from. So the idea here is actually that all this seating, there is actually a, a monitor here, and the CEO or somebody can present from this point here, and people can see it from anywhere above the apron of the opening. 
and then hallways. Uh, we like to take advantage. I showed you the one at 395 Page Mill. This is the latest at Cisco. We try to make the hallways a little bigger. We also try to create um, you know, comfortable furniture and places to write, but there's also a fair amount of acoustics that happen here because we know they're open. So we try to deaden it with the right materials at the ceiling and at the floor. So the future of workplace, um, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're seeing the beginnings of a big pivot uh, in, I think it's in all markets, uh, specifically to my market, um, open plan wasn't really anything you saw five years ago. I mean, it's pretty recent. And then the early adopters like the Facebooks, um, the Twitters have all moved to that. So now everybody's taking a look at it. So there's actually a huge movement across the United States to change to open plan, but you can't just do open plan. You need to have a strategy with these topologies, or at least some of the thought to the topologies that you need to make a functioning workplace. So you're gonna be seeing different, uh, different types of furnitures entering the market. Um, this is actually some product that was designed for Facebook that we've actually, um, it's being made by a manufacturer in the United States, and its first big order came from institutions. So it's going into libraries, into student unions, uh, but it's very on-the-fly, collaborative, reconfigurable furniture. Um, products, we actually had it at the WorkTech event in San Francisco, but these are, these are some changes that we're seeing. I wanna finish up real quickly on um, a project that just completed, and this was actually where WorkTech was taking place um, last week in San Francisco, or two weeks ago. This is an older 1920s building in San Francisco. Uh, not your typical layout, it's a side core, basically an L, and uh, Yelp takes 12 floors in this building. Um, so these are some of the things that we did to make the space um, more livable. Um, big coffee area, all the vendors in Facebook actually at, at, at Yelp get to use this space. So this is a blue bottle coffee vendor that'll be in there for a quarter and then they'll switch it out. And they'll actually have more vendors along this other side. So food vendors actually participate in the, um, the dining experience in this facility. Um, some all hands spaces within the building. We don't have any outdoor spaces to go. We do have a big all hands meeting upstairs, but on each floor, since we're on 12 floors, we've created little areas with sort of like amphitheaters and uh, creative ways to close off uh, work rooms. But it has a very, this is where retail, hospitality, residential have sort of crossed into the workplace. And, and that's more or less what my talk is about today is that the, the blending of all these aesthetics are really, really coming coming really quickly to workspace. Um, and I think a lot of, you know, m most, of the pr most of the issues in, in the Bay Area is that an uh, engineer may only last on the market two or three days before he's, he's hired by a company. And a lot of them are selecting based on the, on, the, on the look of the space, on the culture, and kind of the sensibilities and philosophy of the company. So that can be reflected through the build out in the built environment. And that's it, and thank you very much. Um, this is actually a diagram of work happens everywhere. We kind of showed at the end, and the idea that the entire floor plate, the entire campus is, your, is the workplace, and we want to create those opportunities. So thank you very much. Ringo, stay here. Oh, stay sure. here for some questions. Sure. So I'm sure there will be questions. Anybody got a question right out there? Yeah, there's one just here. We can have a microphone. If you could say your name and, and organization, that'd be great. Thanks. Hi. Thank, uh, thanks. I'm Kevin Eva Norton from Switzerland, independent consultant. Hi. And I have a question on your Yelp project. You say it's 12 stores. Yes. Um, so w what do you do to connect across the floors? The circulation? So, that's a good question. Um, Yelp had come out of a multi-story building and the floor plates were almost of equal size, maybe smaller. We do have an, a staircase in the middle that's lit. It's not as nice as the Evernote stair where it's wide open, it's actually got exit doors on it. Um, but we wanted to create like one area, which was the all hands area that I showed first. That is kind of the main area where people have to get coffee and refreshments. So the idea is that you put one of those in and strategically during the day, somebody will meet or you hopefully will cross paths. We do have individual break areas. So these gathering points are placed in the middle of each floor plate and they, they in a sense become the place where people cross paths. Um, and then the exit staircase is really the way you traverse from floor to floor. And typically by floor plate, you know, developers will be here, they'll have different groups. 
um, but we'll put another one down below so we kind of force people to kind of go up and down the stairs. So it's, it's through the programming that you can kind of create that cross-pollination, hopefully people meeting each other. So, uh, Primo, can I ask you about, I mean, the, 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 in those images, there, uh -huh. there are living areas, there's cooking areas. Yes. I, I don't think I actually saw any beds, but um, pretty much. You know. And so is, is it... They're there. Are these, <laughs> are these workplaces, are, are the designs there to really keep people in the workplace 24-7? Um, the CEO likes to think that's the case. Um, it, it's a little of both. Um, a lot of, okay, so with the millennials and this new generation of worker, um, their whole life work, the balance is they don't mind being at work as long as they have to. They make their friends there, most of their social socialization is through the company. So what we're just trying to do is provide a backdrop. Rather than um, it being this very cold, sterile, very linear farm-like setup that they want to leave at five, yes, there are amenities there that help them during the day. So I talk a lot about work rate, workplace ritual. The idea is that your, your work day is going to be longer. It might as well be a space that you enjoy working in. Anybody, any other questions? One, yep, there's one here. I think they need to come back to yeah. Primo, hi, I'm sorry this is a boring question, but as you've <laughs> spilled into hallways and corridors, yep. have you had to negotiate new relationships with fire authorities over circulation regulations and emergency egress? And equally, as you're persuading developers to create more usable space in common areas, are there, is there a wavy line about what tenants pay rent for, more or less? Thanks. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, do we, there, there is an issue in, in major air exit corridors whether you can put furniture in them. Usually um, we're, we're creating enough exits and it doesn't became a, become a main corridor. And they're mostly the common areas and lobbies that we try to create these nice spaces to go sit and work from. And then in regards to capturing dollars for rentable space, typically we, the way the market is going in San Francisco, at least I can tell you, that uh, a tenant will come through and you get one chance to either hook them or not. And if that common area is reflective of old thinking and we've got like the four Cabousier chairs out there and a receptionist and that's it, uh, they're less inclined, they're gonna pass on that building. But if the lobby has a coffee shop and if it has some amenities, the way the lease, the way the um, landlords get it back is in the, the cam or the, you know, the percentage that they run the building on. So it makes them, uh, yeah, there's a little bit more accountability on them providing the right services. They can't just throw a Starbucks in there. They need to do something a little bit more um, like a blue bottle or more artisanal coffee. So we, it, it's, as, it's as much as important to them to kind of consider these things because the market's changing. The millennial that's going out with a broker is very different than the facilities manager who's been there for 20 years who's just looking for long-term maintenance in things that uh, are easy for him to do. Uh, the entrepreneur today really wants his culture to be in the right space. So whether it's in the urban corridor or whether it's you know, just outside of it, the amenities need to be thought about because they will, they're, they're, they'll make a decision based on that. And they'll either check the box on that side or they won't. Okay, um, there was a, do you still, yeah, question here. Hello, my name is Jerko Larsson from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm an architect. Hi. Uh, I wonder, is, it seems like these examples are from larger companies. We've been discussing this morning about uh, a vision of in the future will be more like donuts, small, smaller entities. Mm -hmm. Is there a critical mass of amount of people to be able to create these kind of creative uh, environments? Well, um, Actually, when I showed Quid, and there was another project that had the fireplace in the middle, that facility is only 5,000 square feet. So there's much, and, and that one's the one that had the whiskey bar on the bottom. So there, there is kind of a, a clamoring for talent in the valley. So it's even the small companies that need to jump in and they think about all these things because it's what makes the company work for them. It, uh, the design can be re resemble some of their sensibilities and philosophy. So they will spend the time and the money. They may not have the space to do 10 topologies, but they'll pick the ones that actually make sense in their particular size and where they are in their trajectory of their company. So I would say that we look at all the possibilities initially, 
um, because now you, can, you don't need to sit at that 30 by 60 desk all day. You can work in other parts of the space. So yeah, we're gonna do our space planning. We're gonna test fit it for the maximum through the release term, but then we're always gonna work backwards and try to find out what are the little nooks and crannies, what are the little things that we can do to make this space special and have some of the opportunities that these bigger facilities have. But are, so, are there any property owners who sort of uh, initiate the hotelier sort of function that you have a lot of small companies uh, taking part of a, a more a whole uh, environment? Well, then actually that project 395 page mill that I showed you where there was a person sitting in the hallway and writing, that's actually um, the floor plate of a, a place that has incubator space. So it has 3,000 to 1,500 square foot spaces. Then it actually has a co-working space right adjacent to a coffee shop and a communal lobby. So this is, that's set up for multi-tenant and, it, and you, know, you can still have a very creative common area. You just need to think about what do the building amenities need to be in order to make that function. So that, the coffee shop, big hallways, we actually have a lecture hall that's available to everybody in the building, and then a landscaped area with bocce ball court, barbecue. There's about 20 photos I can show you of one project, and that is for probably a 200,000 square foot building, and we're just looking at one floor that is a, um, a multi-tenant sublease situation. Right, okay. Well, thank you very much thank indeed, you. Primo, and thanks for answering the questions. Yes, really thank you.